Hi, this is Matt Jones back again, and today I want to take you up the Lost Valley Trail here at the Buffalo National Scenic Riverway. This National Scenic Riverway is like there's 135 miles of river and just beautiful, awesome trails down this spot in the Ozarks that's been cut out by forces, catastrophic events that we want to look at today. And that's what we're on Lost Valley Trail for. If I were to title this for you, I'd say, say we're going to look at the secrets of Lost Valley. So come along with me and let's have a look. Okay, we made it. It's ways up here. Uh, we're up at Cobb Cave. We started out at Lost Valley. It seems like it's been a half hour since I told you about that sign, but we had to come up because I wanted you to see the secrets of Lost Valley. The secrets of Lost Valley start right here. And before you can know them, you need to look at the science book that tells you all about them. I've got right here the Word of God, the Bible. It gives you the guidelines on what happened here in this just unbelievable pile of rocks. Now, in this pile of rocks, I'm standing on a rounded boulder. And there are more rounded boulders behind me. And we're going to look in a minute at some other boulders. But the question is, by your own admission, what happened here? What brought these things into effect? The Word of God tells us. Let's listen here. We're going to go to the book of Genesis. And we're going to look at chapter... 7. It says, In the 600th year of Noah's life, in the second month, the 17th day of the month, the same day were all the fountains of the great deep broken up, and the windows of heaven were open. This world was flooded. You know the story? Even if you only knew it when you were a little kid, you know the story. This whole earth was flooded with water. And if you remember right, it was God's judgment on a sinful world. And if you remember correctly, there was only one man in his family, eight all-inclusive, that made it from that. The great Ark of Noah. Guys, it's not a fairy tale. And I'm here to show you today why it's not a fairy tale. These rocks are rounded. These rocks have went through tremendous turmoil. Something happened here. What? If you look at this huge overarching cave, looks like a cliff-dwelling cave, <clears throat> just imagine when the flood waters left the earth. God said it took 150 days for the flood waters to leave the earth. So the mountains rose up and the valleys went down, the scripture talks about, so that the water didn't stay above the earth, it went down off the earth. And when it did, it did massive damage. Now, if you recall, we're in the Buffalo River Valley area. The Buffalo River was cut by the flood of Noah when the flood waters left the earth. So what happened here? What you see here in all these stones is, I want you to picture this as a cauldron, as a kettle, a rock tumbler, if you will. The water is flying off of this huge mountain, if you will, and it's coming down. It's wearing away rock. This rock is so heavy, it didn't leave this cauldron. It didn't leave this area. It sat here and tumbled and tumbled and turned, and hence you see all these rounded edges. Fabulous picture of destruction, of judgment. But it was the beginning of God's appeasement of judgment. I'd like to go show you another set of rocks directly behind you. Check these out. Now, do you see the difference between those rocks and these rocks? What is it? It's water. It's turmoil. It's those rocks that have been in the rock tumbler. These rocks have fallen from the ceiling and the walls behind me after the flood. The flood, maybe, oh, 
what is it after 10 generations? Uh, two to 4,000 years in the flood. I haven't researched it just recently, but that's about right because we got a young earth here. And all these rocks are rounded because of this boiling cauldron turning them around like a huge mechanical rock tumbler. After the flood, these rocks fell. Were they right after? Don't know. Doesn't matter. They fell. They're not washed. They're not rounded like those rocks are. We need to get a picture of judgment here. God wasn't happy with the people. It said that every man, they turned to violence and cruelty. And God saw the whole world and it was wicked. And it grieved God in his heart. Folks, look at this world we live in now. With everything going on. How different is it? I don't know. But I'm concerned. The perspective I want you to get here. Do you hear my voice? It's like an amphitheater. The wall directly behind me is this big, rounded, worn-off area, like the inside of a big kettle. And can you imagine those rocks right down there, those rounded rocks, with the water swirling in here, just beating against the inside of this kettle, knocking more and more rock down. Look, it's, it's, it's not smooth, but it's smooth. It's been beat off by those rocks down there and the rocks down the valley. I want to show you the rocks down the valley when we get down. The, the turmoil, the death and the destruction pictured here is beyond explanation. But for good reason, God wants you to pick up on it. Let's go have a look. And God remembered Noah and every living thing and all the cattle that was with him in the ark. And God made a wind to pass over the earth, and the waters assuaged. The fountains also the deep, and the windows of heaven were stopped, and the rain from heaven was restrained. And the waters returned from off the earth continually. And after the end of the hundred and fifty days, the waters were abated. And the ark rested in the seventh month, on the seventeenth day of the month, upon the mountains of Ararat. And the waters decreased continually, continually until the tenth month, until the tops of the mountains were seen. Once again, we're talking about the waters continually leaving the earth. The earth, its mountains moving up, its valleys moving down, and this is unbelievable epic proportions of the water leaving the earth is what we see right here at Cobb Cave in this huge cauldron. Now, this rock is the biggest one around. I don't even think it made it over there because it was too heavy to make it over there. But here is, here's another little cauldron, a little, another little kettle, if you will, right behind me. And this beautiful waterfall. Don't we just love creation? And yet this is a fallen creation. This is a cursed creation. Can you imagine the next creation? One likened to the one Adam and Eve had? Just fabulous. And this, this little cauldron back here with all this beauty is once again filled with rounded rocks, indicating the water just coming off of here, just filling this thing like water coming out of the bottom of a, of a jug and just swirling everything down there, knocking all the edges off and leaving behind this reminder of God's judgment. Lost Valley. Boy, we had a trip. That's a beautiful trip up there. It's only like a mile and a half and just wonderful. You folks make it down this way. I suggest you come enjoy it. They've, they've paved the path. It's nice. But what's really important is what you're going to see up there. I'd like to recoup with you or recount with you. We talked about the secrets of Lost Valley. The big secret of Lost Valley is that mankind has rejected the truth of what's happened up here. Okay? The rocks that you saw up there, they're not millions of years old. They're several thousand years old, maybe 6,000 by now. The sedimentary layers that were laid down there, the secret of those is they were laid down in the flood over a period of a year, less than a year for that matter. And when all the flood waters left the earth, they ripped out this river basin and they ripped out Lost Valley and made it what it is with that huge cauldron of just rock tumbling rocks. It got all beat up in there. Lost. 
Lost Valley. Let me read to you what the Lord says. The Lord Jesus said here, it says, Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away. But of that day and hour knoweth no man, not the angels of heaven, but my Father only. But as the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days that they were before the flood, that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking and marrying and giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark and knew not until the flood came and took them all away. So shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Christ is going to return. When he returns the next time, it'll be for his people. And when he returns after that, it'll be in judgment. This flood, these rocks, all speak of judgment, the judgment of God on a sinful world. One day the Lord's going to destroy all this. My hope for you is that you'll enjoy what we see, but that you'll have the right framework, the Bible, to know whether or not you're lost and headed to hell, or whether you're found in Christ and headed for heaven. I appreciate this time with you. Take care now.